In the following presentation, we will discuss database management systems, beginning with how we collect and organize data, to the characteristics of a database with data abstraction and data independence, variations of database models and how they store and organize information, specialized databases, how databases are being used in the digital market and the digital economy, and database administration, including positional roles, database languages, and centralized and decentralized databases. What is a database system? Data is nothing more than a collection of information, and everything contains data, like this box of chalk, which we know contains 12 pieces, and include colors like yellow, green, blue, brown, red, pink, and have multiples of each. But this is messy and unorganized. Instead, we can arrange the individual items alphabetically, number them, and also list the quantity. Using rows for individual items and details about the items in the columns, the information gathered from the box of chalk is now organized. By adding another column, more data can be added, such as if a piece of chalk is a primary color or if a piece is broken. Adding this information to a small list may be feasible, but categorizing this art supply set can create a more complex list consisting of colored pencils, markers, both short and long, and crayons. And the data about these items may not apply to all the items being categorized, like if some are missing or have various shades of the same color. And just like the box of chalk, an art set like this with an array of details can also be collected and organized by color, size, quantity, and any other data types. And since each item in the art set uses one of these data types, they can be shared, known as relational data types, or stored within a file to create a parent table index. And though it may seem organized, it is not managed. If the file was shared between two users and both were to open at the same time, the most current version of that file will be open for both. But if both users add data to that file and then save, information will be lost or overwritten and is where a database management system can correct conflicting data. A database management system is a software system that manages the flow of data between users which allows the most current data to be accessed and prevents confliction by using three layers of data abstraction and allowing for data independence. The first layer of data abstraction comes from the physical layer of the database model, consisting of the physical device or multiple storage devices used to store data. A database management system allows for the modification of files or relocating of files to another drive, regardless of format without impeding users' interaction or management operation creating physical data independence. The external layer in the database system consists of the user and the data extracted from the physical layer. However, this can still cause confliction in data as it did with the art supply file and needs an intermediary layer between the user and the data. The logical layer lies between the user's external layer and the data held within the physical layer. Also known as a schema, a database management system uses the logical layer to structuralize data extraction to the users and permits data from one computer or workstation to be saved and shared with others and allows it to be obtained from the physical layer without restructuralizing the data management schema forming logical data independence. These three layers make up a generalized database model with the external layer that gives the user a view of the data, a physical layer where the data is stored and the logical layer that determines the structure and organization of data. Yet, how the data is managed within the logical layer can create different types of databases, including a hierarchical model database, a network database, and a relational database. The hierarchical model uses parent-child table indexing to store and locate data, where a parent folder contains all the related data. But if a second folder was needed to be added to the database, it would not be able to share the data contained in another parent folder, but would need to be duplicated. This might be an inefficient way to store data as multiple copies of the same file can fill up storage space, but it can be useful for categorizing unique information that would not necessarily need to be copied. Like opening an Amazon account, a file made for you and is assigned a unique customer ID number. When you go to place an order, that order can create a child folder. Purchasing items will fall under that order number and any other information related about that order. A second order also creates another child folder with different items and different details. 
Since these orders contain unique information, they do not need to share information with one another, and is why your recent Amazon purchase is not associated with another person's Amazon account. The network model works similar to the hierarchical model, but unlike the parent table indexing, information can be shared between parent folders. While your Amazon account is a unique folder holding all the information about your orders and possible returns, Amazon also needs to be able to locate information at a moment's notice. With sales, shipping, and customer service, being able to look at a specific order would not only need that order number stored in your account file, but also your account number to direct the database where to look where the specific order information is stored. With a network model, only the order number would be needed that can be accessed by another user searching the database until a match is found and is linked to your Amazon account. The relational model categorizes its information with data related to one another. While searching for an order number will direct the database system to scan all order numbers until a match is found, using the network model would take more time to search for a specific item and instead can use relational data. If you wanted to buy a new charger for your iPhone, you type in iPhone charger in the search bar. iPhone charging cables of many lengths and colors would return but no Android since iPhone and Android are unrelated. But since iPhones are related to Apple products, searching Apple chargers would not only yield iPhone chargers, but also iPods, iPads, and MacBook chargers as well, since Apple makes many different types of chargers and matches the related search field of Apple and charger. While Amazon has a database, their ultimate goal is to sell you an item. So their database mainly consists of items like toys, clothing, automotive equipment, beauty supplies, or anything else they have to offer. A school may also have a database, but in the form of a digital library, whose purpose isn't to sell you an item, but rather to offer information that you may need for a class or subject in various formats and sources. The information held within both of these databases may be alike, where a textbook for a class can be found for sale from an online retailer and also in a digital library. However, these databases both have different purposes and only stores data related to that purpose and are specialized databases. So how else is a database used aside from storing and managing data? Well, data, again, is nothing but a collection of information. Therefore, databases have lots of information. So what do you do with it? You analyze it. Whether it's on a large amount of data, such as a group of users that can identify trends that can manage decision making with marketing strategies, or a small amount of data related to a specific individual like yourself, where a company's platform can offer unique experiences for each individual user by analyzing the data that you provide. Analyzing this information can not only help a company market a product to you, but also be used to predict future data, like whether an economy is thriving or about to face a recession. Managing data can be a daunting task, but the information we need can only be attained if an efficiently established and well-maintained database management system is in place. Like having water available in your home, miles away from a lake or reservoir, it needs to be delivered through a network of pipes. But if a pipe breaks or there's a clog, the source of water is no longer of a value, since it's not obtainable. The same principle applies to a database. If a water main breaks in our database management system, the flow of data needs to be reestablished. A database administrator not only solves problems as they arise, but are specialized in various aspects of the database structure, such as the design and installation, monitoring the flow of data, security and authorization, and maintenance, who all have one common objective, to protect the data. These database admins don't only need to be proficient with the operating system and software used to control a database system, but also the specialized language used by the software and insight on how they manage data. Just how programs may be written in different programming languages like Python, Java, or C+, variations in database languages can as well. The most widely used is SQL, or Structured Query Language, and is primarily used for relational databases and non-SQL for non-relational databases. These languages can, however, be broken down into four sub-languages, each with a specific purpose to the data management process. Data definition that identifies and structuralizes information received. Data control to store and retrieve data to authorize users or to grant access to data. 
data manipulation that allows for and validates the addition, removal, relocation, or altercation of data and data stored and transaction used to record changes in data that may have been manipulated and can restore lost or corrupted data. Both of these languages are commonly used in many different proprietary database management softwares used by major corporations and governments with large volumes of data being accessed and manipulated by many users or open source systems that may be the backbone of a small business, giving both its administrators and software a centralized control of data or be decentralized using a network of databases that all independently monitor and validates the distribution of data to ensure the consistency and integrity of data shared and can be used to stabilize a universal digital currency. So that's the basics of a database and the software used to manage the stored data. And now we know how data is collected from a simple box of chalk that can be organized and stored as well as the complications of invalid data that can be prevented with a database management system using three layers of abstraction to provide data independence. How variations of data models are used and how they store and retrieve data, specialized databases and the information they carry, how analyzing data can help a business with marketing strategies, target advertisement to the individual user, or predict global market health. And finally, database administration with a database administrator whose job is to protect and ensure the data is available to its users, the programming language needed to write a DBMS that can define, control, manipulate, and record data, and centralized and decentralized administration.